guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Ashley and I am the crochet designer slash business strategist here behind A Crafty Concept. In today's video, I have a special treat for you. And if you saw my previous video, I gave you a little sneak peek at the end telling you what this video was going to be about. My previous video was for a crocheted refillable Easter egg and I sneak peeked at the very end a little chicken and this video is going to be how to make the little chicken. So this one was made with faux fur yarn. It's a little weird, but it is an option if you want to try that. But for the tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use regular worsted weight acrylic yarn to make your little chicken shaped refillable eggs. And you can use these as party favors or gift holders all year long. Just because the first design was marketed as a refillable Easter egg doesn't mean you can't use these for all kinds of different things. Baby shower gifts, birthday party favors, Valentine's Day party favors, all kinds of things like that. These are great gift holders. They also would hold a little bit of money, a gift card, some sweet treats, maybe even some crocheted things inside of here. You can also get very creative and make a cardinal with red yarn. You could make a robin's egg blue egg instead of white and have like a brown or tan bird coming out you could make it look like a penguin a flamingo a mallard duck the options are endless and yes i will be trying all of these different designs when i get some free time whatever that is before we get started i'd like to take a few seconds to shout out this video's coffee sponsor today's coffee sponsor is ellen and she just gave a very short very sweet very simple Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. I am so glad you find value in my content. I'm so glad you love my free crochet pattern videos. I hope that if you are a crochet business owner, my business tip videos help you reach your ideal level of success. If you would like to be a coffee sponsor, you can go to a craftyconcept.com forward slash coffee, donate there to support the channel, and then you will get a shout out in one of my next upcoming videos. Two more pieces of business before we hop on over into the tutorial. One, there is a freebie that goes with this pattern that you can download and you market or sell your refillable Easter eggs. It is a sheet of product tags that you can cut out, attach to your eggs, and it will show your customers what they are and how much they cost. You can get that absolutely for free by going to the website here on the screen, signing up to my email list, and it will be sent to your inbox automatically at no cost to you. The second little tidbit of information I want to share with you is you want to be sure to watch this video to the very, very end because at the end, I'm going to be sharing with you three new egg designs and letting you vote on which egg you want me to release next here on the channel. Okay, let's hop on over to my table, see what you need to make one of these cuties and get started crocheting together. Here's everything you will need to make your own little chick eggs shaped party favor bag, whatever you want to call it. You're going to need some yellow yarn. I'm using worsted weight yarn this time, number four worsted weight acrylic yarn for the sake of this video so it's easier for you to see everything. With this little guy, I used a fuzzy yarn that I got from Clarence at Hobby Lobby. I will try to put the name of the yarn on the screen so you can see it, but this yarn has been discontinued. So unless you have some in your sash already, you won't be able to get any this late in the game, but this will show you that if you use a textured yarn, it gives you a different look. Feel free to get creative and try different yarns. You, you will need your white for your egg, your yellow or your chicken color, a little bit of orange for the beak and a little bit of black for the eyes, the scissors and a G 4.0 millimeter crochet hook. This is Clover Amore brand. This is the best hook on the planet. If you've never tried Clover Amore brand, you are missing out. You will crochet faster and better with Clover Amore hooks. I stand behind that. So you can find the graph to make this little chicken egg in the blog post or the paid ad free PDF that goes with this pattern. That is what I will be using today. So let's go ahead and get started. We are going to start with our white yarn for our egg and we are going to make a slip knot and foundation single crochet 10. So we're gonna start by chaining two, one, two, and then we're gonna place our hook into the first stitch that we made. It's the second chain from our hook. We're gonna grab our yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, that's where our next stitch is gonna go. Yarn over, pull through two. That's our first foundation single crochet. Now we're gonna insert our hook into that chain that we made. 
This is gonna be where we start our second foundation single crochet stitch. Grab your yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one. This is where our third stitch is going to go. Yarn over, pull through two, that's two. Into the chain one space that we made. Grab our yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one. That's our next chain space, yarn over, pull through two. That's three, one, two, three. We're gonna continue to do that all the way down until we have 10 single crochets. Yes, I yarn under instead of the traditional yarn over. It's how I taught myself, it's okay. Nothing to worry about, do it however you want, but I will be yarning over traditionally throughout this video, so stay tuned for that. Usually I always yarn under, but for this video specifically, I will be yarning over because I think it makes color changes cleaner when working from a grid. Okay, now I have all 10 of my foundation single crochet stitches. We're going to chain one and turn our work. We're gonna start by placing two single crochets in the first stitch for our single crochet increase. So that just means two single crochets in the same spot. Then we're gonna single crochet eight down the row. So one time in the next eight stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then we're gonna single crochet two times in the last stitch. One, two for another increase, giving us 12 single crochets in the row. So the first row had 10, the second row we did two increases, so now we have 12. Chain one and turn our work. For row three, we're just gonna single crochet one time in each stitch all the way down, again for a total of 12 stitches. Okay, now I'm back in the last one for 12. Chain one and turn our work. For row four, where it's another increase row, so we're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet all the way down, increase in the last stitch, and we're gonna go from 12 to 14 stitches. So I put my two single crochets in the first stitch, one single crochet all the way down, and now we are to our last stitch, increase for a total of 14 stitches in the row, chain one and turn our work. Now we're gonna single crochet one time in each stitch all the way down, giving us again a total of 14 stitches in the row. 13 and 14, chain one and turn our work. Now for row six, we're gonna do our last increase row. We're gonna increase in the first stitch, single crochet down, and then increase in the last stitch, giving us a total of 16 stitches in the row. Now I have my last stitch, which is gonna be an increase to get us to 16, but instead of completing the stitch with the white, I'm gonna grab my yellow. So I'm gonna insert my hook, grab my yarn, pull up a loop. Now I have two loops on my hook. I'm gonna drop my white and grab my yellow and finish out the stitch with the yellow. Chain one and turn our work. Now we're just gonna do 16 single crochets, but this is where we're gonna start our color changes. So you might want to reference your chart if you need to. We are right here, this little yellow one right here. So we're gonna insert our hook into the stitch, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, but instead of completing it with the yellow, we're gonna drop the yellow, and we're gonna come back over here and pick up the white again and finish the stitch with our white. Then we are going to single crochet three times with the white. One, two, we're not gonna finish that third one. We're gonna drop the white, grab our yellow yarn, and just kind of nice and neatly pull it across. This is gonna be the inside of our work. Nobody's gonna see it. If you want to cover it underneath your stitches, you can. Sometimes when I do that, it peeks through. So instead of finishing out that stitch with my white, I'm gonna drop the white, pick up the yellow, make it taut, but not tight, or it will buckle and get weird, and finish out my stitch. I'm gonna pull my white make it a little bit tighter. It's a little bit of a messy stitch. Now we're gonna do one single crochet with the yellow, but we're not gonna complete it. We're gonna drop the white, drop the yellow, pick up the white, finish out the stitch. Then we're gonna single crochet three, one, two, three, but we're not gonna complete it. Drop the white, pick up the yellow, finish the stitch. Then we're gonna do a yellow one, not gonna complete it, drop it, pick up the white, complete the stitch. Three whites, 
One, two, three, drop it, pick up the yellow, finish the stitch, one yellow, don't finish it, drop the yellow, pick up the white, finish the stitch, then we're gonna end with three whites. One, two, and then on the third one, we're gonna switch back to our yellow. So start the stitch, drop the white, grab your yellow, and finish out the stitch. Then we're gonna chain one. Turn our work. Now we are right here on our chart. We're gonna start with our a yellow stitch here on the first one. So insert our hook. Go like we're making a stitch, but we're not gonna complete it. Pull your yarn to this side because this is the wrong side. Grab your white. Complete the stitch. Now we're gonna make a white single crochet in the next stitch, just right here. We're not gonna complete it. We're gonna bring the white forward to the wrong side of our work and we're gonna pick up the yellow. Finish out the stitch. Now we're going to single crochet three yellows. One, two, three. I'm not gonna complete it. Pull this back, grab our white, finish out the stitch with the white. Then we're gonna do one single crochet with the white. Okay, don't complete it. Pull it to the wrong side. Grab your yellow, finish out the stitch. Three more yellows. One, two, three, don't complete it. Grab your white. Finish the stitch with the white. One white, don't complete it. The stitch with your yellow, perfect. Three yellows, one, two, Three, pull the yellow back, grab the white, finish the stitch, one white, pull the yellow back, I mean the white back, grab your yellow, finish your stitch, and then we're gonna end with two yellows, one and two, perfect. Chain one and turn our work. That is all of our color changes. We can clip our white yarn now. We are done with the color changes. And you don't have to do color changes on the back piece. That is literally all of them. So no more fancy footwork. Now we're gonna get ready for this row right here, which is row nine. So we're gonna single crochet one time in each stitch all the way down for a total of 16 single crochets for row nine. 15 and 16, chain one. We're getting ready to turn our work, but I want you to take a good look at your little eggs there. Aren't those so cute? Now we can turn our work and get ready for row 10. Rows 10 and 11 are just one time in each stitch all the way down. So go ahead and finish rows 10 and 11, and then we'll come back and do rows 12 together. Okay, I just finished row 11. Now we are going to do row 12. Oop, there we go. Chain one and turn our work. For row 12, if you look at the chart, you can see we're going back in. So we're gonna be doing decreases for row 12. To do a single crochet decrease, you're gonna insert your hook into the first stitch, grab your yarn, pull up a loop, insert your hook into the next stitch, grab your yarn, pull up a loop. You now have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. That's your decrease. Then you're gonna single crochet across and then decrease over the last two. And we're going from 16 to 14 stitches. And then the next row is just one single crochet in each stitch. So go ahead and do that row after this one. So that would be row 13, I reckon. Here we go, decrease over these last two, just like we did on the first one. Chain one and turn our work. So now we're just gonna single crochet across 
Okay, last one for 14, chain one and turn our work. Now we are going to decrease again. So just like the, the other ones, we're gonna insert our hook, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, insert our hook, grab our yarn, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Then we're gonna single crochet down until we have two left, and then we're gonna decrease over the last two. Okay, two stitches left. Decrease right there. Now we have 12 stitches, chain one and turn our work. Single crochet one time in each stitch all the way down. Again, for a total of 12 stitches. 11, 12, chain one, turn our work. Now we're gonna decrease again. Go into 10 stitches this time. Decrease in the first stitch, single crochet down. And then we're going to decrease over the last two stitches. Chain one and turn our work. We're going to single crochet one time in each stitch all the way down again for a total of 10 stitches. Okay, and 10, chain one and turn our work. Now we're gonna decrease down to eight stitches. Decrease, single crochet down until you get to the last two and decrease again. Then we're gonna decrease down to six stitches, decrease in the first two, single crochet down, decrease over the last two. And then for our last row, chain one, turn our work, we're gonna decrease down to four. So decrease over the first two, single crochet two, and then decrease over the last two. And now you are finished with the front piece of your little chick. You can clip your yarn, leaving a tail long enough to sew in later. This is the wrong side, this is the right side. And look at your sweet little chick. Little, little chick egg so far. I love it. Okay, before we do our assembly, we need to make our little chicken face features. So we're gonna make his face features next, then we're gonna make our last two pieces, and then we're gonna assemble everything. So we're gonna start with our little beak, I would assume. So I'm gonna grab my orange yarn and a tapestry needle. Okay, I have my tapestry needle, and now I'm just going to thread on my orange. This is way too much orange, but it is better to have too much than not enough. I'm gonna go from the back side and poke my little needle out where I want the bottom tip of my chicken beak to go. That's not accurate. I think it's gonna be lower than that. That's a little high. I'll try to fix it by the time I give that to you. I will make it a better graphic so it's a little bit more accurate where you're gonna put your facial features. But I think we're gonna go more like right here. It's gonna be more like this. So I'm going to pop out from the back where I want the bottom tip of my beak to be. And here's a pro tip. If you fold your chicken in half, then pop out through one of these stitches back here that's gonna be in the center. Boom, magic, okay? Just like that. Grab and pull it through, leaving a tail long enough for sewing in. Okay, now we're gonna to start to make the shape of our beak. So we're gonna go for this and this. That's what we're going for, we're making a V. So I'm gonna put my hook into this stitch right here and I'm gonna pop it back out on this side, right here. Like so. Pull that through. And we are just embordering this little chicken beak. In case you didn't know what we were doing here. We're embordering it. Okay, and then we're gonna come back down to the point. Now this is a very wide beak. This is wider than I want, so I'm gonna pull it out. No problem. So I want my beak, let's see if this is the center. I'm gonna go right here. That's where I'm gonna go. Okay, let's just pull it through this time and see what we're doing before we pop it out on both sides. Okay, and now my next one is gonna pop out right here as symmetrical as we can get it. And then we're gonna go back down in where our first little point is, right there. 
And then we're just gonna repeat that until our beak is filled in all of the way. So I'm gonna go back at the top, trying to make sure to go through some yarn fibers and not just around all of them. There we go. Okay, pull it through. Go back down into the tip. Pull it through. And now we're gonna come out on this side. Okay. Really simple, back down through the tip. Okay, now it looks like if we did one right smack in the middle. So we're gonna pop out right in the middle. And back down in the tip. And then our little beak is finished. Super simple, it's like six passes. Really, 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 really simple, perfect. Now you can cut your yarn leaving a tail long enough to sew in in the back. And I would like to go ahead and sew this one together. So to do that, we're just gonna knot our strings very gently. Doesn't have to be tight and aggressive, just knotting it gently. And then I like to hide these tails under my beak stitches here. And I won't do both of them, I'll just do the one. And then after we hide both of these tails, we can come back and get started on making our quick little sleepy eyes. Okay, now that we have our beak complete, we are going to make our little sleepy eyes. So little curves, little sleepy eyes. So I'm gonna grab my grayish black here and my tapestry needle and go ahead and kind of eyeball <laughs> where you want this to go. So mine is gonna go like here and then here, I guess. So this stitch and this stitch is gonna be the corners and then the ones next to it are gonna be the other corners. So I'm gonna start all the way over here that stitch, that's where I'm gonna be putting my eyes. I'm gonna pull our yarn, leaving a tail long enough for sewing in and tying and stuff. Now we're gonna go back in the stitch right next to it. So literally the one right next to it. I'm gonna go in there and then I'm gonna pull my yarn but not all the way through because we are gonna pop it out in the middle of those two spots. So I'm gonna show you as soon as I get it, I'll show you where I'm going. So it's kind of making a little triangle with this corner, this corner, and then the bottom. That's where I'm gonna pop out, right in the middle of the two spots where the ends of my eyes are. And then I'm going to come like this. So pull that eye down so my needle comes up in that loop. Okay, make sure your tails are out of the way. And I'm gonna gently pull it and you'll see my eyeballs start to take shape very gently, okay? Now, I'm gonna go back in around the little loop we just made, back into the body of the, of the chicken. So almost exactly where we just came out at. So I'm gonna go back in, okay? And then gently, gently, ever so slowly, watch it take shape. Ta da Look, it's a little sleepy chicken eye. So repeat that on the other side. The easiest little eyes. Look at that, look how cute. Oh my gosh, look how cute. I love them. Now we can very gently tie off in the back and sew in your tails. And then we are going to make the top and bottom half of our back pieces. They are made exactly like the front pieces. Oh my gosh, this just gave me an idea too. What if you made one that was kind of like one of those apps on kids' phones with the games, with the birds, with the eyebrows? That's just what that made me think of. You could probably make one of these to replicate those, it, but you couldn't sell them because that's copyright, you know, can't be selling them but you can make them for your kids' birthday parties, okay? And then, so to make the top and bottom pieces of the back portion, you're going to follow the exact same steps as the front portion, but you're gonna leave off the color changes. 
because there's no reason for the fancy color changes for the back pieces. So wherever we had these color changes here, you're just gonna go follow this chart. So instead of adding gray to these rows of yellow, we're just gonna make them solid yellow. So this, the first row of 16 will be your last gray, and then the rest of the bottom half will be yellow, and all of the top half will be yellow. And you can follow those instructions by rewinding this video and watching those steps again, because they are the exact same, but minus the color changes, so they're even easier than the first go. I will let you guys do those on your own, and I will make mine off camera, and then we will come back and assemble our little chicken eggs. So if you look at your graph, rows one through 11 is your bottom back piece. You're gonna do these ones right here, which is 12 more rows. As long as you follow this little graph here, you'll be fine. Go ahead and make the front and back pieces. We will come back and assemble our little chicken together. Pro tip, when you are making your back piece, do not cut your white yarn. This will save you two tails to sew in if you don't cut your white yarn. Leave the white attached and then do your yellow, then you can cut your yellow, then make your top piece and don't cut the yellow. Okay, now that all of our pieces have been made, you can see that I kept my white attached to my bottom back piece and my yellow still attached to my top back piece. That is gonna help us have fewer tails to sew in. I'm all about fewer tails. You can go ahead and sew these two in before we start the assembly if you want. I'm just gonna save everything for the end. Now we are going to focus on assembling all this together. When I released the first Easter egg video, which was this one, we assembled our egg on right sides facing out. So we assembled it like this, actually like this. We single crocheted around the whole thing and then we flipped it right side out and ran our finger along the entire seam so it gives it a nice rounded egg effect all the way around. That's why we did it this way. But this one, the chicken one, we're gonna be doing in a different way. So now you will have two assembly methods at your disposal. And if you ever wanna do things like this, you can use either assembly method or other eggs, which I will be releasing in the future. We're gonna show you how to do it this time where the seam stays on the right side. So we're gonna start by taking our this piece here and that's where our working yarn is and we're going to put it where our working yarn is on the left hand side because if you look at the front piece the the tail is on the right hand side that's the front the correct side so we want this to be the opposite so we're going to have tail on the left hand side then we're going to put this directly on top and we're going to single crochet it together starting from this side then when we get to the bottom piece it is going to go on like this. So this one is gonna go under just like this where your tail is on the left-hand side and your working yarn is on the left-hand side because that is the opposite of the front piece. We're doing, we're doing like this, okay? Opposite sides touching. So we're gonna start with these two and then once we get down here a little bit, we're gonna grab this guy because he's gonna go right there. So we're gonna start with these two by putting our hook into the fourth stitch across the top here, just right into the stitch and grabbing our working yarn and pulling it through. Actually, okay, so I chained there. I'm gonna undo that chain. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so I can just see what I'm doing. I'm gonna insert my hook into that fourth stitch, grab that loop, pull it through, and then I'm gonna chain one to secure it. Okay, now we are gonna start single crocheting down the edge. We are gonna single crochet nine stitches down the left-hand side of the egg, and then we are going to grab the bottom piece. So we're gonna start with our nine stitches, and I showed this in detail in the first video, so I'm gonna be a little bit quicker for this one, but if you need to watch the first video for it to make sense, please go back and watch that. So the first single crochet is gonna go here in the side of this row right here. So not here, that's the top of the stitches. We're going into the side right here. This is the raw end of our work. So we have to make spots for our stitches to go. So this is the last row right here. This little hole right here, that is going to be where we're gonna insert our hook. You have to make your own spot for your hooks to go when working on the raw end. Now the back side is gonna look different. We're gonna go here. And the first one's weird, and I'll make it make sense after this one. But the first one's a little weird. The first one, you just got to kind of go where you can. And we're, that's where we're going to place our first single crochet, going through the front and the back pieces together. 
and place a single crochet. Now that's one, we got eight more. So the next stitch is gonna go into this side here, which I call this a bar. And we talked about that in the first video. And then we're gonna look for a hole in the back piece. There's our first hole. So that's where we're gonna insert our hook. That's where we're gonna place single crochet number two. Okay. Now we're gonna look for a hole. There it is, and a bar on the back piece. There it is, we're just lining each row together. Single crochet for number three. Bar on the front piece, hole on the back piece. Single crochet for four. Hole, bar, single crochet for five. Eight, and the last one, hole, bar, four, nine. Okay, perfect. We have four stitches left. So this is where we are. We are all the way. We have done nine stitches down these sides, and we have one, two, three, four stitches left for the top piece. We're gonna insert our hook into the bar of the top piece. Now we're going to grab our bottom back piece and look for a hole, which is gonna be this guy right here. And then we're gonna go through a hole on our top back piece, which is this guy right here. So three pieces all together. And that's where we're gonna place the single crochet. That's one. Now we got a hole here and then a bar and a bar. Hole, here's a bar for the bottom back and then a bar for the top back. Single crochet. That's two, two more. Bar, hole and hole. That's three and last one, hole, bar and bar. So it gets a little weird when you're on the very first or last single crochet. Okay. okay. We started our fourth single crochet, but we're going to finish with our white. So we're gonna grab our white and finish it out. So now we're going to attach these two pieces together. The top back half is already attached on this side, so now we're gonna attach these two. I've got a bar right here. There's my bar, it just looks funny because it's where I changed colors. Now we're looking for a hole. And this is where it's weird because the hole is yellow, but just go with me here. Our hole, and then we're going to place our single crochet. Perfect, now we've got a hole and a bar we're looking for, which is a weird thing because it's where we changed colors. So just do the best you can. Okay, a bar and a hole, perfect. Okay, hole and a bar. I believe that's four stitches. Yeah, one, two, three, four, we're going for seven. Bar, hole, that's five. Place your single crochet. Now, we are at the bottom portion of our egg assembly. So we're gonna put two single crochets in the first stitch, single crochet eight, and then two in the last stitch. We're putting two in each of these four corner stitches to give our egg a more of a, a nice rounded effect. So we're gonna go in the top of the stitch here. So in the top of the stitch right here, just joined right here in the side, we're gonna go in the top of the stitch right here, and then in the top of the, the back piece, right there, and we're gonna place two single crochets in that spot. Also, you can cut your yellow over here. We'll have to pick it up back again in a minute. Two single crochets here. One, and then again in the exact same spot. Two, now we're gonna single crochet across for eight, joining the front and back pieces together. This is the easy part, because you have actual stitches to go into. One, two, seven, and then eight. And then we're gonna place two in the last stitch, which is gonna be right here. 
It's a little weird because it's a foundation single crochet. So in this stitch here, and then the one right behind it, and that's where we're gonna place two single crochets together, maybe, for an increase. Just to make a nice rounded edge. One and two. Excellent. Now, we're gonna go back up the other side, and we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did on this side, but like backwards. <laughs> so the numbers will be seven, four, nine, and then across the top instead of nine, four, seven. So we're gonna go up the side with our white, for seven stitches, then we're gonna to switch to our yellow for four stitches and then keep using our yellow all the way up for the rest. So we are gonna, you can do this part on your own because it's exactly like the other side, but you're just, you're just doing it on the other side. And then I'll come back when we have to join a new color and then you'll do the rest and then I'll come back for the top. Okay, I just did six, my six, and then we've got hole and bar for seven but we're gonna drop the white, I already cut it, and we're gonna pick up our yellow and finish out the seventh stitch with our yellow. Okay, now we have four stitches together, going through three pieces, so we've got bar, and then a hole, and then a hole, okay? Single crochet through all three pieces. And then we've got hole, bar, and then another bar, then bar, and two holes, hole and hole. Excellent. And last one, hole, bar, and then bar back here. And then after this one, we just have nine stitches left going through two panels instead of three. Okay, bar, pull through all of them. Now, that's tippy toes are my dog. We're gonna finish going up nine stitches here and then we'll do the tops together. Okay, my last one going for a bar here and then a hole back here and that's nine. Now we just have to go across the top. So we just put a stitch right here. Now we're gonna go up here, two here, single, single, and then two here for the end. So we're gonna start by going to the top of that first stitch closest to us, and then the one that matches it in the back, which is this one right here. These are in actual stitches. We're gonna place two single crochets right here. So that's one, and then two, two together. Then we're gonna single crochet two times, one in each of the next two stitches, one and two, and then two in the last spot right here. Going through both front and back pieces, one and two. Now we can join into the top of our first single crochet and tie off. Just like so. Okay, now our little egg is almost done. We just need to sew in all of our tails, but you can get a good idea of what it's gonna look like. And you could just put your little treats in here, good to go. So we're gonna sew in all of our tails. I'll just do that off camera. I already showed you a little bit. I'll do, we'll do one together. For anybody who's brand spanking new to crochet and has never sewn in a tail before, we'll do one here on camera together. So I just like to take a tapestry needle under the stitches, going through the fibers of the yarn. That way it's getting all kind of knotted up under there. Then I'm gonna poke it into the inside, and that's the direction I'm gonna clip my yarn on the inside. I'm gonna go ahead and sew in these, the rest of these tails, and then I'm gonna come back and show you a bunch of other egg designs that I already have made, and I'm gonna let you guys pick which one you want me to release next. Okie dokie, look at our little chicken. She's perfect, she is complete, I love it. 
Here she is compared to the fuzzy yarn again. If you want to check that out, also check out the size difference with the fuzzy yarn smaller. Same hook, same pattern. Now, as promised, I'm gonna show you some sneak peeks of some different designs that I've been working on. And you guys can let me know in the comments which one you wanna see next. Here is a potted cactus. Only thing I need to do is add a hot pink little flower right here. That's the only thing I need to do. So imagine that there's a hot pink flower right there. This is option number one. We'll just get that guy out of the way. Then we have option number two, which is also green. A little frog, a little frog we got here. That's option number two. And then the next one isn't really an option because it's a copyrighted character. So I can't release this one for you guys, uh, but I wanna show it to you anyway because it's very fun. Look how cute. I cannot write up this one, but we could do like something wearing overhauls maybe, something like that. But there's one that I made just for funsies. And then the last one isn't complete. This is my third try. This is my third try making this one, but it's gonna be a little cow face and it's gonna have ears and eyes and the whole thing. So which one of these do you wanna see next besides this guy? You wanna see the cactus, the frog, or the cow? Let me know in the comments and whoever gets the most votes will be the one that I release next, okay? Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you love this video. I hope you are as obsessed as these little egg-shaped gift holders as I am. Don't forget to vote for your favorite design that you wanna see me release next. We have a handful of really cute ones to choose from. I have an entire notebook full of different designs, but these are the only ones that I've been able to create mock-ups for so far. So let me know which one you wanna see next and we will make that our next video. Be sure to subscribe so you do not miss it. You do not want to miss these because I have so many ideas in my head that just keep flowing like, an endless flowing of ideas and I can't wait to share them with you. Give this video a thumbs up if you like crochet egg-shaped gift holders. Even if you don't like egg-shaped gift holders, stay tuned because I have so many things up my very short sleeves because it's 85 degrees today in Kentucky. Can I get an amen? Don't forget to grab your freebie through the link down below. Have a wonderful day and an excellent rest of your week and I will see you in the next video.